get up. Why is it that people who are ready to deliver, they always need somebody to help them to deliver? If you had your own capacity, if you had your own ability, you were not supposed to be having midwives. Since you could just take care of yourself and just deliver your baby and do whatsoever, pick yourself up and the like. But it's not possible. Otherwise, maybe you might even lose yourself or lose your baby. Hallelujah. So you always need somebody who can help you and push you into that thing that you've been expecting for so long. And guess what? Every pregnancy has an EDD. And tonight is your EDD for your miracle. I said tonight is your EDD for your testimony. Tonight is your EDD for that miracle that you've been waiting for. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Testify it to your neighbor. Say tonight is my EDD. Say tonight is my expected date of delivery. Say tonight I am delivering my miracle. I am delivering my testimony. Listen. Hey, you have been praying from January to this now. Which one is this? June. Huh? Huh? Today is the last day of June. Can I announce to you? Listen. The last day of June. We are remaining with how many minutes? One, two, three. Maybe three and a half hours. Before we entered July. Yes. Now in the three and a half hours. Yes. This is like the nine minutes of the game. Yes. And you, have just com- you are just completing the first half of your game. Yes. And I don't care who had scored better goals yes. than what you just did. Yes. I don't care who had done better than what you just did. Yes. Hey. Yes. Hey. Yes. Listen. Hey. Woo. We are just completing the first half of the game. That means even if somebody had scored 10 goals and I was on zero, I'm not going to give up. Because I know the same ability, the same God who made it for them. In the next half of my game, in the second half of the game, I can score better goals than what others scored in the first half. Listen. The first half of the game does not determine the winner of the game. He doesn't determine the first half which will never determine the winner of the game. So it is the second half where now you determine who the winner of the game is. And I decree and I declare. Listen. You might have lost. You might have lost hope. You might have lost houses. You might have lost cars. You might have lost relationships. You might have lost marriages. Guess what? You are just in the first half of your game. Hit a high five to somebody. Tell them I'm getting into my second half. Say watch out neighbor. Say watch out neighbor. I am getting into my second half. Listen, you might have experienced losses in your business. We're still in the first half. There's still the second half of the game. Am I talking to somebody? Oh my God, I love what he's saying to me. You know, it's not God is saying, don't be discouraged. You still have the second half. And guess what? Now that we're about to get in the second half, guess what? The coach will always sit you down on what they call half time. When it gets to the half time of the game, the coach will sit you down and begin to coach you. And guess what is going to happen tonight? 
the coach is going to sit us down. Hey! Listen. The coach is going to sit us down. And the coach will begin to tell you, you made a mistake there because you didn't play it well there and there. And the coach will begin to encourage you. And he's going to begin to give you strategies, plans on how you can improve in the second half. To the point that when you get to the second half, even when you had scored nothing in the first place, because of the instructions of the, of the coach, because of the instructions of the coach, and tonight we have the coach who is God Almighty, who has sent us a servant in this place. Yes. He has sent us his servant. Just to come and give us instructions on how our lives can be improved. Hmm. Testify to somebody. Say, neighbor, my life is turning around. Tell them, say, neighbor, something is changing about me. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Say neighbor. Say neighbor. Watch my life. Say watch me neighbor. When I get in the second half. I might just become your boss. I might just become your CEO. Say neighbor. Watch me. The best is about to come out of me. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Something is about to change. Hey, lift up your hands. I want you to talk to this God. Tell him what you want him to do. Tell him, say, God, in the first half of my 2017, Things might have not been too good, but I'm still trusting you. I'm still believing you for greater things. I'm still believing you for a better miracle. I'm still believing you for something great. Thank you, Jesus. Something happens in the spirit when we call out this name. Demons travel at the mention of Jesus. My situation begins to change. Something happens. Something happens in the spirit when we call out. When we call At the mention of Jesus, my situation, situation begins to change. Oh, something happens in the spirit. Something happens in the spirit. When we call out, when we call out this name, demons tremble. Yeah. Demons tremble. Yeah. Your situation begins to change. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I said you talk to your God. Amen. I didn't want you to pray. I just wanted you to talk to him. The same way you talk to people. Talk to him. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Are we ready tonight? To be sat down by the coach. Are we ready? Are we ready? I said are we ready? I said are we ready? Help me to celebrate on top of your voice. On your hands are clapping up. Your hand, your mouth is making noise as we celebrate Pastor Jackie in the name of Jesus. Jesus. The name is Jesus. 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 Your name above. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Such a great honor. OJ, Ojama, please come. Such a great honor. Come, come, come and get this off. To be here tonight again. Um, so, so excited to be here. Sorry, just one second. Something happens in the spirit when we call out. I saw you holding a veil or something. Can I have it? I'm going to use it to preach. And it's a man to the Lord said, I should transfer to you by the time I'm done. Hallelujah. Come, young lady, come. You know, Sinach is a friend of mine. She's been to my church. She's like a family to my husband and I. She's a woman with a great spirit. And I know her. And when we talk, she will tell you that she knows nothing but to love God. And while the woman of God was talking and you were spirits singing, the spirit of the Lord began to minister to me and say, the same grace that is on Sinatch is coming on this. You are in between your miracle and your breaking down. Amen. Now, the good side of this prophecy is that woman of God, as long as this lady is ready to hold on to your heels, she will go high. The day she allow people to distract her away from obeying you, the grace shifts. So you are the key to her grace. And I see you. You know, when you were talking, I just knew that this God is awesome. Last night, I, I mean, I was seeing so many things. And I see you in this stadium again. With people, different races. And as she was singing... You were ministering. And I see people coming out of wheelchairs. I saw people dropping cloches. And I see God shifting this ministry because of you. Your voice will be heard all over the globe. Few years from now, you will go into the studio. Angels will give you songs that will heal people. Songs that will turn people's lives around. I decree in the name of Jesus. Grace! Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, celebrate God. The woman of just confirmed it. She named her after herself. Oh, this God is awesome. Hallelujah. You know, tonight we're just going to move as the Holy Spirit to lead. I had sat down. And prepared a message from this morning. I told you to bring a stone, right? And just about four o'clock, the Lord told me, no. The stone is for the whole church, not for the women. And I said, but God, I had asked them to do this. I must preach this, you know. When you are so sure of something and you, you want to cage God. 
And I was battling in my spirit like, no, this is what I must preach tonight. This tone of battle and the Holy Spirit keep on fighting with me, struggling with me. And I said, no, I just have to preach about this tone. <laughs> and we got into the car and we came here. And I was just wanted to go through my notes to see. And I turned at my daughter. I said, please, can I have my diaries and my Bible? And she said, mom, I left them in the hotel. I said, oh, how can a woman of God preach without her notes and everything? And immediately the Holy Spirit told me, I asked you to wait for me to walk tonight. And so whatever you're going to see tonight is what God is going to do. Amen. I came with a few of my tape just for a hundred rands and just asked of you to just pick it and it will be a blessing to you and you also bless me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The ushers will go around with it. Just make sure you pick it at the end in the name of Jesus. Woman of God, once again I celebrate you. A woman with a heart of gold, with a good spirit. I mean, she loves God and it's so obvious, it's so evident. You can't meet her and know, not know that she loves God. My husband sent his love and his greetings. Spoke so much about you and your husband today. And he's so happy to associate with you people. And he told me he will definitely be here to bless this congregation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's on high demand all over the world. But he will definitely squeeze out time to be here to bless you people. And he sent his love. And everybody in my church loves you. A lot been like, oh, mom, you didn't tell us you're coming to this church. Oh, we love our hairstyle. We love, if you had told us, we would have come with you. Almost about 10, you know, big women like that. You know, Abuja people, they, they're really like, oh, why didn't you say it? Oh, just, I said, wait until you met her. And before you know it, the women in my church called me. They're campaigning already. When is she coming to our church? When is she coming? I said, oh, you don't worry. We're bringing her to Abuja. We're bringing her. Hallelujah. So we will definitely bring her over and she'll be a blessing. And great woman of God from Dar es Salaam. God bless you. So great to meet you. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. And my mother here. God bless you, ma. Thank you very much for answering the call. And to every woman of God here, I bring you greetings and I bless you. Hallelujah. You know, mama, when you were talking, you were stirring something in me. You talked about the man by the pool. The Bible said in that pool in Bethsaida, there are different portions. They have the lame. They have the weak. The blind, I mean. They have those who could not, I mean, move, I mean, have no motion at all. They have different portions. Five porches that were there. And this man was there for 38 good years. The Bible said Jesus did 33 years in his ministry. And this man did 38 good years. Meaning that before Jesus was born, he was by the pool. But my question has been, how come he was by the pool and the angels come to stir the water frequently, often, and this man was not healed? And when I was going through this the other time, the Lord began to open my eyes and said that this is what happened in the church of Christ today. Every Sunday, woman of God, you and your husband come here, you stir the water, but it is not everybody that jump into the water. It's not everybody that get healed. It's not everybody that receive their prophecy. It's not everybody that receive their miracle. You know what? When we come to church, like you said earlier on, we come as single people. But when we come to church, we meet somebody who we do not know where they're coming from. We don't even know the reason why they are in church. We make them a partner and we form a porch. It is only in a church that a gossip will enter into the church without the pastor introducing them to themselves. They locate themselves and they form a gossip porch. 
it is only in the church that you meet people who know how to disobey the anointing and without nobody introducing them to themselves, they meet themselves, they form a part and they become disloyal to the anointing. And when the water is being stirred, instead of jumping in to get healed, they begin to talk around the oil that is meant to bless them. And it becomes difficult to get healed. This man came to be healed. The question has been, who dropped him? Oh, Jesus. He had a mother who wanted her, him to be healed. He had a mother who had carried him for nine months and believed that somehow this boy ought to be healed. He had a father. He had a family. But where were the family when the angel was coming to stir the water? I don't know who has carried you. And just when you are about to get a miracle, they abandoned you in order for you to go through a load. If only you can come out of the fort and make up your mind, then you will be healed. If only you will allow yourself not to be distracted. If only you will allow yourself not to listen to voices that are contrary to the voice of God. If only you will not allow anyone to distract you, you will get your healing. I mean, I passed saw a lot of women in the church. And at a certain point, they form porches. You want to see a church that I want to go down? Look for the church that the women know how to form porches. It's so easy for the devil to strike. And before we knew it, they are this set that all they do is to criticize. What the pastors wear, the criticize, who wears the best clothes, the criticize, I mean, who's up to them. And a lot was going on. My husband and I were preaching so hard, yet we're not seeing anything. Another set came up. They are the rich ones in church. No one is up to their standards. They wait till everybody is seated. And they come with their golds and diamonds. And they feel they are rich. They could control everybody. And they walk into the church majestically. And everybody must bow to them. You don't even listen to the pastor's wife until you listen to them. Because they feel like they are the one bringing the money to run the ministry. And they form the porch. And I told them one day. And I remember there was a woman among them. Who was believing God for the fruit of the womb. But she came to the church and formed a wrong porch. And year in, year out, people were getting their miracle. But nothing was happening to her until we preached about the porch. And I said, which porch are you? I mean, are you in the church because of the, the, what you want to get? Or because of the encounter you want with God? I mean, we all are here. As our faces are different, our clothes are different, so are our problems, so is our need, so is our problem, so is our solution, and so will our miracle be. So if we all came here looking for something in particular, how come I am so concerned about what you're going through? The church is like a hospital. Whether you got headache or you got HIV, we both came to see the doctor. It does not matter the magnitude of your sickness. The doctor is a consultant and he will listen to both of us and he will prescribe according to the level of our sickness. So you don't come here and you bring me down because you feel like my problem is bigger than yours. You don't come to church and you try to bottle me. You try to cage me because you feel that God has answered you. You don't come to church and you try to make me feel low because your miracle has come. You don't come to church and you make me feel like crying because you got your prophecy. I may not have my prophecy today, but tomorrow is surely going to come. For women may endure for the night, but joy will surely come in the morning. It does not matter what I went through yesterday. By tomorrow, I can have it. A woman can only carry a baby for nine months, but after the labor comes a delivery. I don't know whom Satan has came. I don't know whom Satan has bottled. I don't know whom Satan has lied to. I am here to tell you tonight that your miracle is here. Your moment has come. Your time is here. 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just be seated and let's just run through what we want to talk to. I just needed to encourage somebody tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When the woman of God sent me the title of this program, I was so excited because this is one common story with women. Broken, yet bringing the queen in you. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 11. I'm going to run through it tonight and see what God will have me do. Oh, hallelujah. 2 Samuel, chapter 11. And I take the reading from verse 1. Now, it came to pass in the spring of the year. At the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servant with him and all Israel and they destroy the people of Ammon and besiege Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. Now verse 2. Then it happened one evening that David arose from the bed and walked for the roof of the king's house. And from there the woman was beautiful. And from there he saw a woman bathing and the woman very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? Then David sent messages and took her. And she came to him and he lay with her. For she was cleansed from her impurity and to return to her house. And the woman conceived. So she sent and told David and said, I am with a child. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to talk to you on what I titled, Shorty for me, O oh God. Shorty for me, O oh God. A man can stand in for you. When we are talking about a shorty, we are talking about somebody who is willing to go an extra mile to stake for you. Somebody who is willing to give up everything in order for you to be delivered. Somebody who is ready to give a landed property, stake their name for you to be freed. Somebody who is ready and willing to let go their prestige, their integrity, their name that they may have built over the year to see that the other party is set free. And tonight we are here as women to lift our voices and cry unto God because we know that it is only God that can stand for us in a time and moment when things happen and we do not have control over. It is a time when, I mean, it is only God that can stand as a shorty for you and you will have no fear. It is only God that can stand as a shorty for you and you will not doubt whether you are free or not. It is only God that can stand as a shorty for you and you will be sure that you are forever delivered. It is only God that can shorty for you and you know that you can come out of poverty into riches. It is only God that can stand as a shorty for you. And you know that you can come from that sickness into healing. I don't know who's here tonight that has gone through pain. You've gone through issues. And you do not understand what exactly is happening to you. I am here to tell you that because you are in this house tonight. The Lord will shorty for you. The Lord will answer for you. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will hear your cry. The Lord will dry your tears. The Lord will become your voice. The Lord will be a signature to you. The Lord will wipe every pain. The Lord will take away every depression. The Lord himself will shut in for you. From what we read, the Bible said Bathsheba was just like every one of us here. A woman like us. I'm so glad I'm talking to only women tonight. Standing in the bathroom taking her bath like every other day. Married to a wonderful man that she loved from the depth of her heart. But from nowhere the king saw her and the king beckoned unto her. Sent for her and then she came. 
Tell me, who are you that the king will send for you and you will refuse? Tell me, who are you in South Africa that the president of the nation will see you and send for you and you will refuse? Refusing to answer that call may mean ending your life. Refusing to answer that call may mean ending your destiny. Refusing to answer that call may mean ending it all. And here was an innocent woman taking her bath in her own house, in her own bedroom, in her inner court. And here was a man who saw her, a man who has authority, a man who ruled over her, the man who has control over her beckoned unto her and said come and the moment she called the Bible said the king took her to his inner chamber I ask you a question tonight what if she was raped we only knew she got pregnant no woman in her right sense who is married and loves her husband will fall in so cheaply but who will hear the voice of an innocent woman coming out of the place. Who would believe that a woman entered into the king's chamber and she would say that the king raped her. Who would believe her? And yet, she has to go with the pain. The stigma. The shame. Hey! It was the king that called her. But it was the woman, oh, that got pregnant. I don't know what you knew nothing about. The situation that you innocently entered. Some of you entered into that marriage innocently. You went with the whole of your heart. But at the end of it all, you are experiencing a heartbreak. Some of you entered into that marriage with everything, with the whole of your heart. Believing that, that is going to be the end of, I mean, of your bitterness. But right now... As I look at you, I see that in that marriage, you are crying. Some of you entered into that school. You walk your head all oh, so hard in order to pay your fees. In order to, you struggle to pay your way to school. So that when you come out, you will have a source of livelihood. But here you are, out of the school, and you got nothing to show. You did nothing, but somehow, life is not fair for you. I stand under the calling of Mount today and I said anywhere that Satan has caged you, in any way Satan has bottled you, in any way your destiny has been shot may God shot it for you and this was the situation the woman found herself most of the time woman of God we are at the receiving end you see a boy going wayward in life, they said it is her mother. You see things not working well in the home, they say it is the woman. Hi, and for those of you that are from South Africa, I can imagine the pains some of you go through when you have to work so hard to feed your man and feed your children. When you have to work extra hard to make sure that the home front is intact. It is not enough. I mean, taking care of the home alone is a big work. How much more having to toil the time you are supposed to rest. You are working. Some of you will have to work three extra hours to meet ends. What a world. And this was where this woman found herself. A situation she has no control over. As if that is not enough. The Bible said the king sent for her husband and he murdered him. Oh, what a word. What a humiliation. What a pity. What an, what an image without integrity. Some of you, as you look at her, look at you now. I see your life and I feel for you. You were innocent when you got pregnant for that child. It was not part of your plan. But somehow you saw yourself having a child out of wedlock. And now it has become a stigma. You entered into that relationship innocently. And somehow you saw yourself sleeping with a man. And you got contacted with HIV. And now you have become the victim. I 
just like that woman, you are here tonight, not knowing what to do, and you are broken. But I thank God for a meeting like this, where queens are coming out, where queens are coming out, where golds are coming out of the ashes, where we are getting a beautiful vessel out of the clay, a time when God is purifying you to bring out the diamond in you. When God created you, he didn't create you empty. He created you with a substance. You did not enter into life empty. You have something the world is waiting for. You have something that you got to offer. You have something that you must give. And until you give it, you will not end it. Until you give it, your life will not be over. Until you give it, it will not be over. And here was this woman in so much pain. And as if that is not enough, the Bible said, after all this mess, the king married her. Which is where we want to set to tonight. Bringing out the queen out of your mess. You can imagine the first lady of this country going to the supermarket. And as she wants to buy, the sales girl will look at her and say, look at her, murderer. It's husband's nature. You killed your husband, now you are forming first lady. I can imagine the embarrassment that Bathsheba had to go through as the first lady in every nation. When a first lady is coming, red carpets are being rolled. In every nation, when a first lady is coming, she's being celebrated. In every nation, when first lady is coming, the household member, they celebrate her. But here is a first lady who is broken, who is battered, who is in pieces. And I can imagine even the driver that will drive her will be driving and in his mind, he will say, look at her useless woman, a murderer, a woman, a woman who has nothing to offer, a woman without integrity, a woman who could kill her husband because he wants to marry the king. I can imagine the humiliation, the shame, the embarrassment that Bathsheba had to go through as a queen. But despite all the pain, the Bible said she was a queen. Not only a queen, she was the mother of Solomon, the only man that God saw in him, the only man in the world that God gave a blank check, the only man that God loved so much, and God came from heaven without the man asking. I don't know where men has given up on you. I don't know the name that men has called you. I don't know the mockery that you have gone through. I don't know the stigma that you have carried before now. I am here to say that when men say you will not go up, I stand upon this altar and I decree the time to rise has come. When men stood and declare and determine your destiny, I stand upon this altar and I decree to that your season has come. When men say that you will not go up. I, I kneel upon this altar and I call upon my God, Jehovah, shut in for your people. Before they become a shame, Lord, I kneel on this altar and I say, Lord, shut in for them. Before people will make mockery and laugh at them and call them name, Lord, I kneel upon this altar and I say, Lord, shut in for them. Oh, Jehovah, my God, I call upon you as I hit my hand upon this altar. Anywhere people have hit their hand and they have decided on your destiny tonight, this altar we are there for you. Lord, shut it for me. Lord, answer me. Lord, give me an answer. No matter the level of pain, no matter the level of rejection, bring out, oh God, a queen in me. Let me not end my life, oh God, in shame. Let me not end my life, oh God, in shackle. Let me not end my life, oh God, crying, oh God. Let me not end my life with nothing to offer. Lord, I am meant to be a queen. Let me not, oh God, live a life on you that has nothing to offer. Enthrone me, oh God. Enthrone your people. Before people will laugh at you, before the nation of South Africa will reject you, I put on your head a crown of honor. I put upon your head a crown of glory. I put upon your head a crown of celebration. I put upon your head a crown of celebration. People will look at you and they will celebrate you. People will look at you and they will clap for you. I put before you a red carpet. Walk upon it. 
that the queen you are meant to be walk upon it and be celebrated you will no longer go down you will no longer be rejected the time has come for you to be lifted the bible said she was hopeless a woman that was innocent a woman oh Jesus thank you Holy Spirit wave your hand I see an angel oh thank you Jesus oh thank you Father Lord I thank you oh Jesus hallelujah thank you Father thank you Jesus oh Lord I bless you Father thank you Jesus oh would you give my perfume from my back oh Oh, thank you, Jesus. I hear the Lord say it. Your tears are over. I hear the Lord say it. Your tears are over. For weeping may endure but for the night. I hear him say it. Who is man that would decree when him God has not said it? I hear God say it in my right ear. Daughter of Zion, your time to be lifted has come. Those that gave up on you yesterday, they will celebrate you. Go, 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 go. See a red carpet before you. See people celebrating you. See people lining up and asking for help. See people, see your old friends. Look at them saying, is she really the one? But I hear God say, it. I, Jehovah, will exalt you. I change your smell tonight. I put upon you the fragrance of a new anointing. Go and shine like the queen that you are. You will no longer cry again. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, this woman came to a point where she could not raise her head in Israel. As if that was not enough. The Bible said, Amnon and Absalom had stepchildren began to fight her. Oh, even when she went through humiliation before the nation of Israel, as if that was not enough, a time came when her husband that was her defense became old and he could not do anything again. Some of you, Satan thinks that by taking away your defense, he has ended you. He thinks that by taking away that man whom you trusted so much, he has emptied you. He thinks that by taking away that money, he has taught your source of dependence. I declare Great tonight in any way Satan has cheated you I'll put you back in any place where Satan has bring you down I lift you up in any way Satan has reduced your speed I speed you forward the time has come for you to be celebrated for upon Mount Zion they shall be delivered oh shout oh ye again be the head lifted up you daughters of Zion your moment of celebration has come for if God be for you who can be against you when God is on your side favor is on your side when God is on your side blessing is on your side when God is on your side breakthrough is on your side she came to a point she couldn't take it anymore her steps children began to mock her and she went to her husband and said king what do I have out of this what can I get out of this your older children are insulting me calling me name insulting me and make me look like I have no place in this palace. As if that is not enough. My only son whom I have is illegitimate. So how can he fit into the system? Oh, there's somebody seated behind. You have a child out of the wedlock and you're wondering what is going to happen to you. I see God saying I will yet settle you again. I hear him saying, it is a new beginning for you. I hear him say, he will get you married again and you will be celebrated. Hey, I see somebody here. They will pay your lebola. 
they will pay your lebola. I don't know what that means in my ears, but I just heard God said, Lebola, Lebola, they are gonna pay it because God is about to say to you, Forget what has gone through bad before. The Bible said, Behold, all things have passed away and everything has become new. I see God doing a new thing. Can you put some water in my hand? I see God doing a new thing. I see God doing a new thing. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, walk with me. I see God do a new thing. I see him doing a new thing. It's a new beginning. I water your life. I give you a blessing for today. Receive anointing. Oh, Maka Shandarara. Take it. Take it. Some of you cannot stand on your feet. Oh, take it. Take it, take it. Hey, I see fire. See an angel standing there. Oh, I see fire here. Oh, Maka Shandarara. Yandarara. Take it. Take it. It's a new thing. It's a new day. It's a new day. Bring this lady for me. It's a new day. It's a new day. Come on, come on, come on. It's a new day. She can't stand on her feet. Help her to stand up. Oh, look at me, look at me. Take it now. Take it. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. Hey, open your mouth. Open your mouth. For out of your belly, I hear God say, shall flow rivers. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Marco Shandera Haya. Marco Santana. Come. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Lift your hands. Oh, Jesus. I hear God say it. Pray for joy that does not have joy. Here God said, she's joy, but there's no joy here. At times, you ask God, when will it ever be? You ask, Lord, I am holding on, but there's this change I want from you. When will it ever be? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. And I hear God say it. Your joy will come again. Your joy will come again. Your joy will come again. Where people thought it is over, I hear him say, I will celebrate you. Don't give up yet. Because you are about to step into another realm. Financially, you are going to be lifted. Maritally, you are going to be lifted. People who laughed at you yesterday. <laughs> you think, ah, see a ranger over here. Oh, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. This man is rich. This man is loaded. The Lord said, just as your name, so shall your blessing be. Receive joy on every side. Take it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And she was confused. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, young lady. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Ah, where's your husband? Come on, stand up, stand up. Can you beat this song for me? It's your wedding day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on now. Begin to dance into your marital breakthrough. Dance like there's no tomorrow. Dance and celebrate. I see a wedding. I see a wedding. I see gathering. Come on, somebody celebrate with us. This is her moment. Come on now. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Take it now. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes, Lord. Celebrate, Jesus. 
celebrate Jesus. Shout fire! Shout fire! Shout fire! Shout fire! Shout fire! Lift your legs, shout fire! Shake your body, shout fire! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Jesus, I feel an anointing for tonight. I feel an anointing. Somebody celebrate. Oh, yes, Lord. Congratulations. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. And she was confused. But Shepherd did not know what to do at that point in her life. But yet, the God had a plan. He had a package for this woman. The same woman that was rejected. It was not just the palace alone that rejected her. The whole nation spited her. You have not been rejected yet. I tell you tonight. Your family may have given up on you. Your friends may have given up on you. Every other person, your colleagues at work may have given up on you. But I'm here to tell you that God has a package in stock. God has a plan in stock. God has something very big he wants to give to you. Oh, please come, woman of God. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Father. Oh, I bless you, Lord. I hear God said, It is not over yet. I hear Him said, Why weep? Because I have something that I'm about to do in your life. You came to this shore of this nation with so much hope, you had so much plans. You felt like this is how it should work. But somehow when you look at your life right now, it is nothing compared to what you desire. But I hear the Lord say to me, daughter, I'm taking you back home. The next time you are going back home, the people who are waiting on you, they will celebrate you. To be precise, I see a shrine where they plan and say that you will walk, but there's going to be nothing. See what I see. In the realm of the spirit. Try to take emotion. Try to move forward. Move. And they bring you back. You try to take a step. And they pull you back. They are saying. Right from your village. That you cannot do anything in South Africa. And it will work for you. But tonight I hear the Lord say. I am a shorty for you. I am God of all flesh. I will do a new thing. That person who is putting you on the altar. I decree within the next three weeks you will hear a call that will go down the grave. Their end has come. Those that cost you, I hear the Lord saying, I Jehovah will cost them. Those that abuse you, I the Lord will mutilate them. They will look at you the next time and they will look and look and they will marvel. Is she the one? Because I hear the Lord say, I Jehovah, I do a new thing. Receive it. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And she thought it was over. But she ever thought it was over with her. But little did she knew that God has a package. For there is actually a queen in that mess. She was a nobody. A woman who has gone through abuse. Hi, have you been abused before? A woman who's gone through depression. You know what it means for you to be working as a first lady and yet nobody respects you. At my level, I know what it is. How much more a first lady of a whole nation? But yet, the God that I serve, say he's I am that I am. 
He said he's a God of all flesh. He said he's Jehovah, the one that speaks in thunder. He says he's a God that fights battle without raising a dust. I call him in my language, the Agabaitu, the Ojoki Afo, the Apatepati, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the yesterday and tomorrow, the today of my life. I carry such a God and if I have a very big God, then I cannot be small. If I carry a big God, I don't care what you labeled me as. I cannot be small. Because the Bible says, he that is in me is bigger, is greater, is mightier, is heavier. I, he is all God by himself. He doesn't need your permission to bless me. He doesn't need to ask you to give me. He doesn't need to knock on you to deliver to me what is mine. Tonight, I give it to you. Take it! And then, she has this God by her side. And when she thought it was over, the Bible said, God began to walk his own. The same time, time will not permit me. But before, I conclude. Go to Psalms chapter 119 verse 122. Psalms chapter 119 verse 122. Oh, if you are there, I want us to read together. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. And this was a cry that David has to pray along with Bathsheba when it seems that nothing was working for them. When it seems that all hope was lost. This was a prayer that David came to the temple and prayed with his wife that God will answer them. If you are there, shall we go? Psalm 119, verse 122. And it says, I have Psalm 119, verse 122. It says, be shorty for your servant for good. Do not let the proud oppress me. Father, before Joab will oppress me, before the rich in the society will oppress me, before those who think that they have the name will oppress me, before somebody will think because they've got a figure that will oppress me. Before somebody that work in my office think that they're my boss and they will oppress me. Lord, be a short thief for me. Before the proud will put me down where I do not belong to. Before my neighbors will bring me down. Before those in my family who has bought a car before me will mutilate me and mock me. Before my friends who are already married before me will look down and mock me. Before those that have money in the society. We think that I will amount to nothing. Father, be a shorty for me. Lord, before they will oppress me, shorty for me for good. And they had to call upon this God to shorty for them. When God shorty for you, no matter who fights you, they can never win. Oh, they can never just go and sleep. Except you don't know this God. But if you know him and you pray this prayer, there's nothing you should be afraid of. Oh, there was a time in my life with my anointing, with my calling, that I was in a mess. <sighs> oh my goodness. I loved one lady so much in church, woman of God. When I mean I love her, I loved her from my boils. She was my second brain. I could do like this and she would answer it for me. I don't know, Satan, you can't cheat me. And she was so close to me that she sits beside me as my armor bearer. I am so busy, so, so busy that I, at times, I forget things because there are so many schedules on my table. So, my phone 
is literally with her. She answered the calls. The only thing she does not do for me is to cook and serve my husband. Which is what I do till today. Till tomorrow I do that. You know? And I trusted her so much. I entrust her. If she was here, I couldn't have even talked to you. Because you discover that times I will forget. Then I will talk to you maybe after two weeks. Then I remember. Because I will just say, please help me talk to mama. I talk to you once and she makes every plan. That is how much more I brought her into my bowels. But she oppressed me. She stabbed me right at the inner of my heart. The first thing she did, Satan can enter into anyone. Satan can enter into anyone if you don't know God. Don't be too comfortable, my friend. Don't be too comfortable, my sister. The person who's laughing at with you today, tomorrow might be the one stabbing you right from behind. And I trusted her before I knew it. She taught almost every woman in church against me. She was saying stuff that were not true. There's no country I travel to without her. We sit together in business class. I do virtually everything with her. At times, she had booked the hotel before we get there. And we just tell our host, don't worry, we've got everything sorted out. So we paid for the first two days, you can continue. That is how much my husband and I trust her. And then, she took advantage. People will come. They want to see me. And she would tell them, you want to see that one? She's very arrogant and proud. She's not going to give you any attention. Don't bother. And when I dress, I'm coming to church in the morning on Sunday. You see some ladies are just looking at me. Just imagine. Only God know how much she used this all, all the money in the church they're giving this is what she was used to be Meanwhile, I go to preach around I write books I mean they do stuff and people bless me at times I'll go to the Camerons to Italy to UK people I preach for and I just like I come and I go the next thing they're looking for me they're sending money and crediting my account and I, most of the time I am naturally a very simple person just like you you know these stuffs you're wearing was made customized. That is how I do my stuff. Because I don't even have the time to go and be looking, shopping, and I don't have the time. So I got somebody who, I mean, is very good who understands my body size, and then he makes my clothes perfectly. And she knows. And sometimes we buy clothes that are not expensive at all. Because my brand is simple. It must be fitted and beautiful. It must not be expensive. That is my style. And so I don't care. But the next thing, she goes tell them that one of her clothes is worth 500,000. And so when I'm coming to church, everybody is looking at me as that proud, arrogant woman that all she does is to empty her husband's purse to dress. And then, the next thing she goes to tell everybody was that I don't pay her. She was on a constant salary. The church was paying her. I was paying her personally from my account. I got her a car. I pay her bills. Her house bill, her light bill, everything is paid. I paid her children's school fees. They were on scholarship by me. The next thing she goes to the rich people in church and start telling them she doesn't give me money. She doesn't pay me anything. Can't you see how I am suffering? I don't know if you could help me with a hundred thousand. I need to pay my children's school fees. Can you help me? Before I knew it, she was stabbing me right from the back. And I had no idea. Before I knew it, the whole church hated me. I was like that Bathsheba. I was hated by everybody. I couldn't walk anymore. I'm coming to church. I could feel resentment. I could sense hatred. And I cry. And I hold on to my husband. Say, what have I ever done to these people? I love them with my heart. I sacrifice you, my husband, for them. You don't have time for me and my children. We understand. 
The little time you give to us is what we, we get and we appreciate it. We know you are busy. At times my husband is in the church praying and counseling till 2 a.m. Before he gets back home, I've slept off. The next morning, he is coming home. I mean, I'm waking up by 10 o'clock. He's still sleeping because he didn't come home early. And I have to dress and I go to the office. So I just fix his breakfast and I'm gone. So by the time we are seeing for the first time, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon when he comes to the office. And we just greet and maybe spend like five minutes in the office and everybody goes again. And at times as he's coming, he's just to tell me, baby, how are you? I hope you're okay. Please just forgive me. I had to catch a flight. I am going to Ghana and we hug and he's gone. And I felt like if I could give out this man to you all, the least you can do is appreciate me. But I was hated and resented by the same people I was sent to bless. Because one Ekan entered my camp. And I became a shame among my own women and men. And I will call them. You see a little girl. I try to talk to her. She will just bring me down. And I said, something is definitely wrong. I said, God, I can't have you. I serve you. I know you. And Satan enter into my camp. It's not going to be possible. And I began to pray this prayer. Before the enemy will bring me down. Before Satan will bring shame to me. Before Satan will make people to hate me. Lord, shut thee for me. Before I am oppressed in the same land where I'm meant to be celebrated. Lord, shut thee for me. Before people will look down on me and call me name. Lord, shut thee for me. Before my tears, oh God, will not make me to sleep. Jesus, shut thee for me. Before people will call me a name that you do not give to me, Lord, shut thee for me. And I went into this prayer every night for one month. And you know me, I know how to deal with this God. I have worked with him for too long. God called me when I was 15 years. Give me water. I don't have time to use water here. When I start ministering with water, you will see raw miracles. Give me water in the middle of the night. I said, this is your tool of office. And I said, then I was too young. I couldn't understand. And as I grow in ministry, one day the Lord woke me up. I said, when a woman is pregnant, what happened? The first thing that breaks is that the water breaks. And after the water breaks, the baby comes with blood. And for the baby to be okay, a water is used to wash the baby. And the Lord said, as you minister to people with water, every, every, every bondage is broken. And every mess is washed off. And I began to pray. I said, God, show tea for me. And I remember one Sunday, my husband was ministering. He didn't need to raise seed. And he was right hot under the anointing. And I carried $500. And I came and stood. He said, baby, what is it? I said, now I want God to show tea for me. He said, what? I said, yes. I got a pain in my heart. I have a, a depression going on. I see an oppression from the wrong people. Lord, show tea for me. And as I was, he was praying, he said, give it to me. Kneel down. He began to pray for me. The people, some few people in church that were going through serious problems began to run out with seed. $100, $500, $200. He was praying, not knowing that the enemy was seated right behind my seats. And then, <laughs> Satan is wicked. But we serve a God that is greater than every other thing. <laughs> The next thing, there was a leader in church, a leader, part of the main leadership, whose wife is also a leader. She started dating the man without me knowing it. And the man left his wife for my personal assistance. 
Can there be more shame and mockery than that? And she thought it was going to be a stigma. But God is faithful. My seed of shorty rose and began to fight for me. The woman whose husband was taken stood with me one Sunday and said, Mama, now I know that the devil in this church is this lady. Before I knew what was happening, the whole church turned against her. Before I knew what was happening, everybody started looking for how to get her. One day I came. I didn't even know all these things were happening because we traveled to South Africa. Not knowing that while I had prayed and traveled, the angels had gone in and started walking. As we were coming down to Nigeria, she became uncomfortable. She said, Mommy, I said, what is wrong with you? There's something I cannot figure out. She said, I, I don't know. Before I knew it, without me saying a word, she packed her load, packed everything, ran away. And when she left, one after the other, people were coming to make restitution. Mommy, forgive us. You're a nice person. Can you pray for me again? Can you accept me again? Can you take this seed again? This is what this person said about you. I never knew this is how good you are. Mommy, please forgive me. The same church where a few years ago I was hated. The same church I am being celebrated. The same church my members can lift me up in the air. They can die for me. They can do anything for me. I mean, I don't buy anything. My members provide for me. They give me everything I need. They became my family. Loved me without resentment. You can do anything to anybody in church. But when you mention my name, they became my army. The same people that Satan wanted to use to oppress me became my defender. Because God became my surety. This was the problem issue of Bathsheba. And then everything worked contrary to who she was meant to be. But just when she thought it was over, the Bible said, ha, the king was tired. The same king that could go for battle and fight with spare became old. He couldn't hold on to the spare again. The sword could no longer stand in the hand of the general. And then the priest went to him and said, who shall be king over Israel? And the king looked at them and said, yes, Absalom is the most qualified because he's very intelligent, eloquent, and handsome. Anob, yes, is a great and wonderful son. He is the first fruit. He should come. Adonijah is the one that is meant to reign after me, King David. But no, the daughter, the son of the rejected woman, the son of the abandoned woman, the son of the oppressed woman, the son of the woman that was mocked, the son of the woman that was forgotten, the son of the woman who was a nobody shall reign in my stead. Thank God for mommy. Today we have mommy. In the house. But tell me, there's no how you will celebrate Prophet Didi without celebrating mommy. Please, somebody help me hold her. She's on that strong okay. Thank you, Jesus. There's no how you will celebrate the man of God without celebrating this woman. No matter how much he goes in the world and anywhere he goes, and say, this is my mother. Naturally, people celebrate. And that was the situation of Queen Bathsheba. The same woman that was called a nobody, all of a sudden, became the queen mother. And not only a queen mother, but a son that had no wife. A son that had no counselors. A son who had nobody. So Bathsheba was literally... I mean, ruling Israel through Solomon. 
time will not permit me to show you in the Bible where the Bible said that Solomon will go and consult of his mother and she will say this is how it should go. Anywhere men has given up on you, you are about to be celebrated. A queen is imagined out of you. A ruler is imagined out of you. You are about to take over. You are about to make decisions in your family. You are about to make decisions in your family. In your office, they will not take a decision without you. In your home, they will no longer take decision without you. Wherever you are now, I put you above and above alone shall you remain. And the Bible said, this boy took over Israel and then began to reign. And he reigned with his mother. For him to get married, he took the counsel of Bathsheba to get married. But the end of the matter is that the only king in the Bible that God came down and gave him a blank check was a son of a rejected woman. Who told you there's a queen in you? Who told you you cannot reign? Who told you your name and signature will not matter? Who told you that you are not men to rule? Who told you you are not an important entity? Whatever lie that Satan has lied to you, enough has he come. No further will he go again. The time to reign is now. For the set time for Israel to be set free is now. And she began to reign with her son. And the way around my story today is that after she was forgotten and everything is gone and Jesus came and the genealogy of Jesus was written down. People like Deborah, people like Hannah, people like Esther that had a good background, good integrity, good lifestyle, their name were never mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus. But the name of Rahab, the wife of David, the wife of Uriah, the mother of Solomon was mentioned. I don't know where men has raised you today. I don't know where your name has not made a name. I don't know where your name has become of no importance. If a name of a rejected woman, if a name of an abused woman, if a name of a woman who is for Forgotten can be among the lineage of the name of Jesus, the one whom we all serve, the one who rule over the earth, the one who speak a word and the whole earth come to be, the one who in seven days was able to control and create the whole world, the one whom the Bible said hold the whole world in his hands. If this woman can be associated with him, then you have a future. You have a testimony. And my prayer is God, shut tea for me before men will oppress me. Rise on your feet. Tonight we're going to pray one prayer. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know that pain that has broken you down. And you're going to pray one single prayer. Before men will oppress me. Before the proud will oppress me. Before this problem will give me a name. Lord, show thee for me for good. Like you saw it in Psalms. We're going to pray that prayer in unison. And say, Lord, show thee for me. Anything you want him to do, this is the moment. This is the hour now that is going to do it. Lord, shall see for me for God. Mandele rabo shataka, sentele rabo boko shenda haya, dele rabo boko sente kahasha, yendele rabo 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 rabo, yekele rabo rabo boko sente ha, shenda rabo 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 boko sente ha, yenda rabo rabo boko shenda ha, yala rabo, makele rabo 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 rabo. Shati for me for good. Shati, oh God, for me. Before the enemy, oh God, 
we make me a mockery. Lord, shut thee for me before men will look down on me. Shut thee for me, O oh God, before my ministry, O oh Lord, will come to an end. Shut thee for me, oh yes, Lord, before my age, O oh God, will make me a shame. Lord, shut thee for me before my finances, O oh God, will put me in a shame. Lord, shut thee for me for good. Maka Somebody pray tonight. Somebody pray tonight. Lord, shut it for me. Shut it for me for good. Oh, yes, Lord. Shut it for me for good, oh God. Before men will mock me, shut it for me. Before my life will come to an end, shut it for me. Before my family, oh God, will give up on me, shut it for me. Yes, Lord, be a shut Stand for me. Be a voice, oh God. Stand for me. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Through it all. Oh, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Oh, yes, I've Lord. I've learned to trust in God. Like through it all, through it all, through it all, yeah. Through it all, I've learned. Oh, yes, Lord. I've learned. Thank you, Jesus. Oh yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh yes, Lord. Makalada, center of us. Oh yes, Lord. Maka center of the center of the center of Somebody talk to him. Just be in the spirit because I sense a great anointing here. I just sense a great anointing here tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The Lord said I should impact into you the oil upon my life. While I was seated, he said, look at that lady. She's carrying a mantle. Use it to preach and transfer grace into it. That through her, I see a great healing anointing. Look at oil dropping out of your hands. Look at oil dropping out of this hand. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see a great healing anointing. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. The hour and the moment, oh God, has come. The last time I did it, oh God, you gave me a great result. The ladies all over the world now, even greater than me. And you tell me, oh God, to do the same thing tonight. I am just but a servant, oh God. And I am here to obey your voice. Use her more than you have used me. Lord, I have gone to so many nations in the world. Many nations of this world have been opened up to me. Without me struggling, oh God. Visas have been given to me. I have been called to preach, oh God. I have seen people being set free. Literal deliverance in my ministry. I have seen you do wonders, oh God. The same that I carry, Lord. You said I should give it to your daughter. Lord, I transfer all that is in me. All that I have. All that I carry, Lord. I transfer it into her. Bring her, bring her back, bring her back. Somebody help her. Oh, I feel a strong anointing. Hey. Oh, Shas, you have to be strong. Oh, Ajima, come and get my shoes off. 
Makasanta ro ba 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 kushanda. Lift her up, lift her up, lift her up. Yandela ro ba 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 ba. Oh, there's a strong anointing in this house. Be fast, OJ, be fast. Yandela ro ba 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 kushanda. Mama ba ba ba, remove my shoes. I feel a strong anointing. I feel a strong anointing. Some of you cannot stand on our feet. Bring her back for me. She can't stand. She can't stand. Hold her well. The oil is coming. Take it now. Marco Center. Aye. Can I get water? Marco Center. Can I get water? Marco Center. Yendelera. Yendelera. I see a strong angel standing here. I feel a strong anointing. Some of you cannot stand under your feet anymore. Oh yes, Lord. Your season is here. Shut it for me. Oh, for good. Some of you, as the water touches you, your deliverance is coming. Some of you, aye, 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 aye. come on now, Lord, change her story, Father, change her story, change her story, change her story, Lord, change her story, change her story, Lord. Come on, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. No button. Come on now. You can't stand on your feet. I feel a strong anointing. Take it now. Take it. Take it. Come on, daughter. Receive it now. It's your turn. Take it. Take it. A strong anointing. Take it. Your time and season has come. Your time and season can come. Come on now. Take it. Center, hey. I feel a strong anointing. I see my angels standing here. The angels are following me anywhere I preach. It's here already. Take it. Deliverance are going on now. Be delivered. Hey. Come on, give me water. I need to get something out of the head of this woman. Hey, what is this thing I'm seeing? Come on and get out. Out of her. Out in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Take the anointing. Take it, it's your season. Some of you cannot stand. It is your season. Come on, daughter. Take it now. The season you have been waiting for has come now. This is the season. The Lord will shut it for you. This is your season. I see a new beginning. I see a new season. Oh, take it now. It is your season. Oh, Marco Shandaha. Receive it now. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Give me water. Give me water. I feel an anointing here. Come on now. Come on. Take it now. Come on now. Give it to me. Take it now. It's your moment to be celebrated. Come on now, take it now. Oh, somebody celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. I see her. Oh, see an angel standing there. Oh, Jesus. See an angel standing there. See an angel standing there. Come on, take it. Oh, Lord, give me water. Give me water. Come on, choir, take it. Take it. Lift your hands. I see an angel standing there. Your season has come. Your season and moment. Usher, stand beside them. Your season has come. Take it. Bokoro Bokshan. Yalarabu. Maka Center. Yalarabu. Maka Center. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on. Oh. Jesus, oh, you can't stand. Some of them still cannot stand. Oh, see, see the anointing there. See the angel there. See an anointing. I feel a strong anointing. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it there. Hey, see fire. See literal fire. Oh yes, take it there. Take it now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Time will not permit me. We need to go. Tomorrow is a long day. We need to go. I feel a strong anointing. But we need to go. 
I just needed just a few of you that will stand with me and said we want to help the woman of God to sponsor this program. She's paid so much to bring us here. She paid my ticket, I mean the hotel, everything, and you said we want to support with a $500. If you are among them, right, come now. I just want a few of you that we said, Lord, short tea for me. You want to give $500? I don't know how much it is in rands. $500, $300, $200. Can you